Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hi. So today we're going to be playing a game. We're going to be doing some gameplay. If you like this gameplay content, just comment down below if you like it. And also, one thing I have to say. 51% of you guys, I checked my analytics, are not subscribed. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> oh yeah. I can also, like, talk about, like, lots of things that I want to talk about on these videos. Because I'm just having fun playing the game. So we're going to play as a country of Turkey in the game Conflict of Nations. Oh, great. <sighs> Military logistics. So, like, in provinces that don't mobilize any units, you can build lots of things. Like an airfield. Because it allows aircraft, air mo mobile airlift operations to go to so like let's say i was moving a unit here i can move them and guess what they could fly all the way from here to get to point a to point b okay yeah i also want to talk about what i got for christmas in a little bit but if you guys want me to talk about the gifts I got, comment down below once this video is uploaded to all y'all. Okay. So, my first plan of attack is... I'm going to be attacking Tunisia. So I'm going to go for the United States route where they don't declare war on the country. <laughs> Let's check my diplomacy. There's me at war with no one. So yeah, you can actually declare war on a nation, but me, am I going to actually do that and notify my enemy? So I'm playing an overkill mod in the game. So in this overkill mod, I can be, I'm playing the World War 3 mod where I can attack all these other nations. If you see these like nations like Canada or the United States look like they have no borders, it's because they have an alliance with each other. That's the main reason why. If you see that and if you want to comment down below about that. But yeah, some of these countries have alliances with each other. Oh, let's see. Research has been completed. Yes, now I can mobilize tanks now. So before I started, I tried doing other attempts to record for this series. But sometimes my phone will turn off and then the screen recorder will turn off immediately. So now I can build these tanks. So I've been mobilizing units so I can get ready to get to war of countries if I need to. <laughs> so, I'm mobilizing to get ready to attack Tunisia and my next door neighbors. So, let's see. I split these units in half so I can get ready to arm up at my nearby border. Let's see, can I have a here? Oh, damn. If I move all the way here, I can declare an unprovoked war of Syria. <laughs> oh, damn, I sneezed. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is crazy what I got for Christmas so far. I really made a lot of money at <laughs> Christmas. Where literally, my, my uncle and aunt gave me a check of a hundred dollars and I could not deposit that so my mom gave me like uh literally uh one hundred dollars in cash and I gave her the check of one hundred dollars so she could deposit it herself because I don't have a bank account so if y'all want to try to hack me to get a bank account mine you're tripping. 
So wait, let me count up the money I got so far. But yeah, I can also talk about some of the things I do not like about this game. <laughs> Where like, over here the units take freaking forever to move to a spot. Hey, right, so let's count up the money. So I got a few $1 bills here. So like, I'm not gonna brag about it, but I might. Literally, some of this is... Some of this is kind of like a benefit of an upper middle class life, really. Because if you're in an upper middle class life, some of your problems might not really exist. Because you're kind of born into the near part of the elite where you can... Where your family is, like, able to go near to the part where they're, like, almost about to get to millionaire or, like, almost have, like, almost a half million dollars. Which, I know my upper middle class side of the family does not have. As well as, like, my dad's side of the family is upper middle class. So, in West Virginia, we live in, like the suburbs were like like outer city area of what well, the second biggest city in West Virginia you could look up what's the second biggest city in West Virginia which literally we live kind of like <laughs> we could live in like development development area and basically, the reason, one of the reasons why my dad moved there is because the land is cheaper there in West Virginia. Because sometimes land is cheap in rural red state, rural states or the countryside where development's happening. Like in West Virginia, for example. So developers... Ryan's home bought up some of the farmland over there so they can build houses for families of four families of six I'm in a family of six in my dad's side of the family like I got three sisters <laughs> lol oh my god three sisters but I love them <laughs> they're nice they're nice when you talk to them and stuff like that, but when sometimes you grow up to be a teenager, oh my god, having to deal with teenage siblings. <laughs> See, if you're a parent and you have experience having to deal with teenagers, <laughs> damn, I wonder how you can do that, how you are able to handle having a teenager in your house, because sometimes you would see in like reality TV shows, like I want, or like, drama shows or like shows like gossip girl for example like you would see if like you would see the father of uh of one of the main characters dan humphrey have being a single father really and having to co-parent with the mother who is like in another state, I think. They live in, like, the New York City area. But having to parent their daughter, his daughter, Jenny. But when a teenager starts growing up, they're going to start wanting to be more independent. Have their own autonomy. Want to do their own things. And he tries to basically make sure... To keep her out of trouble. Yeah, some parents, when they have to deal with teens, they have to keep try to keep them out of trouble. Make sure they don't do bad things. Like, parents, they want you to be a respectful citizen, have a stable life, have backup plans, have a great education. Like, my parents, like, I'm grateful for my parents wanting me to have a great education because, yeah, sometimes they recommend me to get off my phone. <laughs> LOL, yeah. And to read books. Yeah. As well as my friends, my YouTube friends, tell me to read theory. 
and also the only book that kind of is near theory i don't know considering to their standards <laughs> of what's theory of like a book that can kind of be near theory like now when christmas came like some of my anti-communist like family members actually got me theory so for example one of my anti-communist family members got me two Marxist Leninist books. One by Frederick Engels, Principles of Communism. Next, Karl Marx and Frederick Engels, The Communist Manifesto. But my mother, <laughs> love her, <laughs> she's great. If you would want, like, She's awesome sometimes. <laughs> Some things we can disagree on, but... I got the book of the person who was killed by social democrats, aka Rosa Luxemburg. And it's called The Accumulation of Capital. Which is kind of a great read, but it's a huge-ass book, but... Uh. But I already finished reading The Communist Manifesto. And learning about literally conservative, conservative or bourgeoisie socialism <laughs> or reactionary socialism. Like, for example, when I talked about the transphobes in the communist community, they were basically kind of the conservative socialists. Or, for example, they're kind of the react, they're kind of the... Uh, what was it that Marx called, said? They were kind of the reactionary socialists. Yeah. And he also talks about... He also... Also in this book, he has the critique of utopian socialism and communism. And he talks about the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. But in the principles of communism, you have... Frederick Engels explaining what is communism, what is the proletariat. The proletar the proletariats then have not ex any all always existed. And in the table of context I'm going to look in here while playing this game. Let me check the research. Okay, one of my tanks is getting ready. Damn it, I don't have the raw materials. Let me check the raw. Okay. Oh, Jesus, it's gonna take a while. Oh my gosh. Yep. Now I can make the National Guard. <laughs> LOL, too much raw materials. But this takes a 30 minute research slot. But yeah. Where. I can read some of it on the context how the proletariat originated and the bourgeoisie takes place. In Rosa Luxemburg's book, they talk about how the accumulation and the process of capital happens. And also, they have a translator's note because this is translated from, I think, Polish or German to English. And they also have a note on Rosa Luxemburg and her life. But they don't talk about a lot of things, but uh, go check out Azur Scapegoat's book on Rosa Luxemburg. But back to what I was talking about when it comes to teenagers. Teenagers want to get their independence. Not just teenage girls, as well as teenagers. Like, because we all develop through puberty, we're going to have arguments with our parents on what we want to do with our lives. Because, dog, we're gonna have it anyway. It's, like, there's no way you're gonna stop an argument from happening with your parent or your teenage kid. Your kid is gonna have an argument with you on even the littlest of things. Like, let's say I had an argument over... Literally a spot to sit on a on the couch. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> they are 
like, the argument is going to be, like, kind of stupid, really, when you look at it, but, yeah. Basically, if, like, like, they want to have, like, their own independence, their own spot, and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's going to annoy the parent, even if, when your kid is going to argue with you, he goes, one, you kind of are the authority in the house, kind of. Like, if you're the, if you guys are parents, a couple, you guys are the authority in the house. You guys, basically, the kids have to follow your rules that you guys made in your house. <laughs> Like, for example, uh, clean your room, do your chores. Like, when my parents tell me to do my chores, I do them. Sometimes I don't, but kids will be kids. Like, make the bed, or help them, or do your own laundry. Teenage stuff. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, like, for example, clean my own clothes. Yeah, you can have, like, an argument about, uh, when you can clean your clothes, or yada yada yada. But arguments are gonna happen. It's not stoppable. It's impossible to try to stop it from happening. Or even preventing one from happening. It's gonna happen, anyways. Because it's going to happen. Because having to raise a kid... It's hard. Yeah, raising a kid's gonna be hard. But yeah. But yeah, let's talk a little bit about what I got. So let me count how much money I got so far. So I sorted them from $1 bills to $10 bills. But let me check that I do $20 bills because one, I can forget if I accidentally mix in the $20 bills. So, let's see. Sorry, that was a notification from Dude I Watch. His name is Jackson Hinkle. Go watch him. He made, he organized a great effort with one of his fans or one of his subscribers to organize a sit-in at AOC's office, as well as worked with people who want to see Julian Assange be free. They're... Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I know. There's my Discord notifications, they get on my nerves a little bit. Let's see how long I've been filming this. For 18 minutes. <laughs> LOL. But yeah. This is going to be like 20 or 30 minutes, but okay. <laughs> or 20 something minutes. Okay. Yeah. But let's see. Let me complain about the game. Yeah. When it comes to moving troops, it takes you like freaking 13 hours. <laughs> LOL to move troops. And also, when it comes to mobilizing a unit, it takes, like, let's say infantry, for example, or a tank. This takes a day. A freaking day to, like, mobilize. So let's say I was trying to mobilize a unit, and an enemy was trying to invade my land and invade the city. I'm mobilizing. It takes them 19 hours, but the enemy, to get to my city, would only take them less than one hour. <laughs> Like, it's, like, annoying, as well as, like, how far the unit has to go. Like, this unit over here takes them one hour to get to here. Short distance when you look at it with your own eyes or with your own fingers. But that's how the way the game works. That's how the game works. <sighs> there. Let's see. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, 
fifty. All right, let me guys give you guys a close up of Turkey. The capital's here. I also have like a plant, so I'm gonna patrol this area to see if any Syrian troops are near my border. Okay. And also, I'm invading Tunisia to try to insert my dominance over the Mediterranean, but also to assert my dominance, I need to start building naval bases. So to check the progress of all my cities and their mobilization of units or building something, you can go to cities and try to check how's, how's it going and their productions of resources. Okay. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, oh wait, 50, 60, 70, 80, Eighty, ninety, one hundred, one hundred and ten, one hundred and twenty. Yep, one hundred and twenty. One hundred thirty. Oh yeah, I remember. I was checking Yokapin. I don't. Sorry if I mispronounce his name. Uh, he's one of Paul Morin's friends. He had a ten k, a sub. Q and A live stream, it was four hours. <laughs> I told him <laughs> that my dad wants to use Puerto Rico as his tax haven. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> he said that's that's kind of a great idea because if you could use that to basically fund rival a fund a revolutionary. <laughs> Mark's just letting us group, but yeah, and I was like. But my dad's anti-communist, and my dad <laughs> has different beliefs than me. And also, I don't want to be blood-sucking chupacabras in the island of Puerto Rico. Because sometimes rich people buying up the beaches are blood-sucking chupacabras. Dirty. So screw rich people. They're monopolies. I hate these people who defend people like Frickin' Jeff Bezos and stuff like that. Say, oh, they make a lot of jobs and yada yada yada. I'm like, dog, stop defending these rich people who literally had the power to end world hunger because they have that much money. Or, like, for real. Like, they have that much power. 140, 150, 160, 162. Okay, I have 162 dollars in cash. I don't like ML as an ideology at all. He's talking about Marxist Leninism and Maoism. So Marxist Leninism and Maoism is basically the full name of Maoism. I am still trying to study Maoism and I asked my f I asked one of the Maoist content creators I know because I saw him on Paul Moran's chat and on a live stream with the Angleses. So go check out his collab with the Angleses, where he's not Marxist Leninist, he's a Maoist. And he was also on Jason and Rune's live stream where he was, where he, Jay, 
Oh wait, not Jason Aaron's live stream documentary. This will not be monetized, lol. Because <laughs> the documentary was originally going to be monetized. But yeah, had the criticism, which has merits. Like I love to hear criticisms of me, and if you have any, comment down below. And also, if you want to DM me about these criticisms, my DMs on Discord are always open. <laughs> lol. But, yeah, I asked him on my DMs if his, if he had any book recommendations on Maoism, because I'm doing my research and my investigations <laughs> into China. Not like, oh, criminal investigations, like, I'm learning, I'm trying to develop an opinion on China, and basically my opinion so far is it used to be communist until Deng Xiaoping took over and introduced capitalism and brought it back into China but I don't know enough about modern day China to see if it's still kind of the way Deng Xiaoping has it because one I heard Xi Jinping might not like Mao Zedong because Mao Zedong almost wanted to hunt down his father for some reason. I don't remember the whole thing, but I learned about it. Where his family used to live in a cave, I think. Xi Jinping. Yeah. As well as there's, like, debates in my circles. Like, in my Discord, I had, like, a little disagreement with Person 1. A.K.A. Person 1 is one of the subscriber uh, friend of Obnoxious Anarchist where he said Venezuela is not socialist. I believe they're building a way to go to socialism like for example like MAS in Bolivia it's called the movement towards socialism and they are trying to get to socialism. They are trying to build socialism in their country to what was the word to say for it? To try to establish it as a socialist nation. Some people on Paul Morin's Discord basically were like, no, they are not socialists at all. And I'm like, okay, I get the criticisms about, oh, the markets and stuff like that, but here's the reason why they still have the sectors where it's not all of it's public. Because... For example, they have to deal with a political crisis happening in their country. Even though Hugo Chavez was basically building this country to the way where he was trying to get away from that. And he was able to kind of do it. I think like a good chunk of it is not public and their media is corporate owned. But they keep the businesses in check and they nationalize industries in Venezuela. For example, they nationalized the oil industry in Venezuela. And they were saying Maduro is no socialist. And I was like, okay, go check Abby Martin and go check out Anti Conquista, great people, on their videos proving they're moving towards socialism. They're trying to get to socialism. I can label other sources like Telesaur, even though it's funded by the Venezuelan government, but who cares? English or uh, PSL, Liberation News, they're Marxist Latinists. They are just building a path towards socialism. That's what they're doing. But they also use quotes from Lenin to basically try to prove their point, but. Okay. But, like. They're moving there. And also some people told me about like Mexico. They said that literally AMLO's more like Lula. I get that, but I think AMLO is moving my uh family's ancestral homeland to the right direction. Cause like the People's Party movement is trying to base their building of a new party, even though I don't think we need the People's Party. We have third parties and a people's party. 
like, if you're a Marxist Leninist and you don't want to join the Green Party, there's PSL. And also, if you have a problem with PSL, please tell me, because I want to hear your guys' criticisms out. Because, one, I want to hear people's criticisms of PSL, because <laughs> I saw in Paul Morin's live chat when they were talking with Mel from Twitter, uh, where some people were, like, having criticisms of PSL and going, like, ugh, PSL. <laughs> LOL. And I was like, what's wrong with PSL? But nobody answered me. But yeah, I wish they could answer me. Damn it. <laughs> and tell me, criticism of PSL, please. <laughs> oh, this is fun. To get my opinions out there. <sighs> So pontoon is basically a way to basically, so here's the way it's used. Constructed in coastal provinces, allows ground units to embark and disembark operational at 40 health. So basically, this kind of helps you get your units to disembark. And there's only spots where you can build it in these coastal provinces. And literally everywhere we're, tr like, Turkey is almost all the way coastal. The only place that's not coastal is, like, over here, where it's bordering Iran and bordering Iraq. And the majority of northern Syria, except all the way to here. Where they took this from France, I think. Yeah. Where, lol. See, they got some parts of their Ottoman Empire back. <laughs> oh yeah, Turkey's political situation is crazy. I remember I learned about it a little bit, but yeah. But yeah, I wanted to hear about the criticisms of PSL. I have my criticisms of PSL and I have my criticisms of Belarus. Like... My only support for Belarus is on anti-imperialist grounds. That's where I have my support for Belarus. On anti-imperialist grounds. And also, this is so weird. I never knew that literally Maoism is to the left of Marxist-Leninism. I didn't know that. <laughs> and lol, I'm on like a Mao's Discord chat. A Discord with my friend Malice One, uh, my Malice friend wrote, my Malice friend literally is on my Discord thing. Also, one of my friends, Alex the Remote Control Fridge, left the Discord for some reason when I did something that was kind of considered as based in some circles, like saying, uh, if they want a war, a bread to, oh, crap. If Bread Tube wants a war of annihilation, we will give them a war of an. Oh, damn it, I could have shaken Transcaucasian. They will have. We'll give them a war of annihilation. They were like, oh shit, base Falcon. <laughs> LOL. Yeah. But some of my friends were like, com my friend Alex, for example, is confused. He's still kind of a bread tuber. Why don't you talk to him about that? But yeah. I also got some of my Marxist Linus friends. They were telling me to be patient. Yeah, I okay. Be patient, just wait till the right time to do all this stuff. Okay, let me make a deal with Transcaucasian. Let me message them. To be patient. 
I'm gonna make a free trade deal. Yep, free trade is bad, but... Oh, they're communists. Hell yeah. Ah, oh, Jesus. Let's see. Yeah. So... I... want to plan my convention. Some of my friends told me, basically, my channel is not big enough yet. Okay. And to try to get at least 50 content creators. I got near to 10 or over 10 to be on board. I'm getting near to 10, really. Content creators to get on board with this idea. And I also try to get big names to involve like Hakeem, but... He has devoted too much time to his other focuses. I also asked him a question about Romanian communism or Enver Hoxana. Sorry if I butchered the Albanian communist's name. As well as what is his thoughts on Titoism and Yugoslavia in general. He said, that's a long question, LOL. Yeah, also the Romania question is kind of like a personal question a little bit because I want to learn more about Romanian communism because it used to be a part of the Eastern Bloc. And my family left due to basically after like communism left Romania, I just go left Romania because, hello, USR illegally dissolved. Bring back. Bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> got illegally dissolved like that eastern bloc gone warsaw pack ripped for shreds <laughs> got dissolved and when romania started adopting capitalism there was no opportunities so my family moved to norway some moved to norway or sweden denmark or finland because they have better opportunities. They are social democracies, really. Social democracy sounds good, but hello? Killed Rosa Luxemburg. Fuck you. <laughs> but yeah. But it basically bordered the USSR. So the USSR could have just easily invaded them and just crushed them. And just wiped them off to existence and had all Scandinavia to itself and had dominance over here. But yeah. Here, literally, it can move. Like, their, the influence of communism has a big effect here. Oh yeah, I have a friend. I know somebody who lives in Finland. His name is Finbull. I have talked to him before, but not a lot. It was about the Venezuela election. But, one, the Venezuela election was a great victory. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Long live Madero. <laughs> yeah. The Venezuela election... Oh, wait, wait. Jesus Christ. So back. The best for the election was good victory. But yeah, I wish I could have talked to Finbull even more about lots of things. And also, damn it, can somebody give me Jason and Rune's Discord? Because, damn it, I'm going to fanboy over that dude. <laughs> and talk to him about a lot of shit. Oh shit. We spotted Syrian troops near the border. They're in the city of Aleppo. Okay. How's the progress? Okay. Moving in. Moving in. Okay. Yep, cool. But the good thing is, with these planes, they are really good at what they do. Like, quickly, if you want an airstrike, boom, they're gonna get right there. I cannot go to war with Russia. <laughs> they're too much of a superpower. But literally, every single time when I play a game, 
Russia gets, like, just demolished quickly, but isn't Russia supposed to be some huge-ass superpower? Like, why isn't Russia trying to regain the Russian Empire and take Central Asia, take back some of the territories? Like, Russia can easily have Lukashenko just annex Belarus, and then, boom, Belarus is now part of Russia, and now borders Poland. Oh, wait, it already does border Poland. <laughs> yeah, because literally, their relations are so close. Ah, oh, damn it, it expired. Sorry about that, guys. That's a great discussion. But, thanks for watching, guys. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. And also, if you like this, please tell me if you want to see this episode 2 of my gameplay. Okay. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.